Praise the Lord. God bless you. Uh, here I am with another word of the day, and it is encouraging. I praise God for how he just knows what to say, when to say it, what we need. Uh, God has brand new mercies for us every morning. Typically, I, I want to be here a little earlier in the day between 730 and 8. Uh, it didn't work out this way today. So here I am. Praise God. And I can't wait to share with you what God has put in my spirit, which is uh, in short, help is on the way. Help is on the way. And this might not be what you expect because, you know, we expect God to show up and do these miraculous things. And yes, he does those things. But this is something that's a little more practical uh, that all of us can be challenged to do. And that is to kind of keep our eyes open for who God has put in our lives already to be helped. Uh, so let me share with you what the spirit of God showed me. I was in prayer this morning, seeking the Lord, uh, asking him questions, just sitting with him. And he took me into a dream. And in this dream, I saw Superman and Spider-Man. And we know they're unlikely to be uh, tag team partners because one is from the DC comics, the other's from Marvel comics. I don't know if that's even possible to have that happen, them come together. But they were together and they were battling a common enemy. And of course, they were taking care of business. There was no problem. But then uh, I knew by the spirit they had to move to another destination after they defeated these enemies. And so Superman takes flight. Spider-Man tries to keep up. But I saw a, an energy bar on the screen and Spider-Man's energy was was zapped. It was just down to nothing. And he fell from the sky. And Superman swooped down, picked Spider-Man up off of the ground right as another enemy was trying to take advantage of Spider-Man's vulnerability. He didn't have the ability to move, he was incapacitated, and he was lying on the ground, and here comes an enemy trying to take advantage of it, and Superman was right there to, to fight off this enemy with no problem, uh, scoop Spider-Man up, and then he took Spider-Man into this room, and in this room there were supplies, there was food, it was a place of relaxation, a place of rejuvenation, it was secluded, it was a place just they, them two were able to access, kind of like a secret lair, and uh, Spider-Man got his energy back, in no time and was back to uh, back to normal. And right after this, I saw a door kicked down and I knew another enemy was coming in to, to basically try to take advantage of what he thought was a vulnerable time for Spider-Man. But Spider-Man had already been taken care of by his friend Superman. And so as I was uh, praying into this dream, I kept hearing the words, two are better than one, two are better than one. And it's in the scriptures. We know that Ecclesiastes chapter four says two are better than one because they have a good reward for their labor. So many of us are in church, but we're isolated. So many of us are in church and we don't want to be vulnerable with anybody. We don't want to be transparent. We don't want to talk to anybody. We don't want anyone to know what we're dealing with. We don't want anyone to pray with us because we're trying to put on these fronts and we're wearing these masks like Spider-Man wears a mask. Amen. We don't want people to know who we really are. But through the dream, the Lord is saying, you might have superhuman powers. You might be able to do a whole lot on your own. But even Spider-Man needed Superman uh, when he was down. There was an ability Spider-Man did not have. He's a web slinger, right? He gets around by shooting webs and swinging around and going from the top uh, of a building to another building top. But he can't fly. And so to get to their destination, oh, this is the word of the Lord. To get to your destination, you're going to need people who have abilities that you do not have. In the dream, Spider-Man and Superman were heading somewhere. And I didn't know where it was, but I knew they had to get there together. And on their way, Spider-Man was trying to pretend like he could do what Superman does. How many of us do that? We see someone else's ability we see someone else's talent and gift and we don't want to admit they're better than us. And we try to keep up or we try to pretend we have this gift and we get worn out because we're doing something we're not anointed or gifted to do. We're not talented to do it. We're not even assigned to do it. Spider-Man was trying to pretend like he could fly. He had no business being there and it wore him out and he fell. It didn't take long for that to happen. In fact, it was almost instantaneous because why? He couldn't fly. He didn't have the ability, but he was pretending that he could keep up with Superman because he was reading his own press. He's like, oh, I'm a superhero. So I can do it even though I haven't done it before. And the Lord is saying for all of us, take a step back and really assess, where are you doing things that are wearing you out? You're not called to do it, right? You don't have the talent to do it. You don't have the gift to do it. And you're trying to keep up with someone else. Just 
How about we augment one another instead of trying to replicate one another or imitate one another? Two are better than one because they have a good reward for their labor. There's a work to do together. In verse 10, it says, for if they fall, one will lift up his companion. This is what we saw Superman do. Spider-Man fell and there was no shame. Some of us are afraid, man, if I if I walk with somebody and they see my my vulnerabilities, they see my issues, they see my struggles, my challenges, they're going to think different of me. Man, it was good that Superman was there when Spider-Man had his moment of weakness because he was there to pick him up. It says here, it continues, but woe to him who is alone when he falls, for he has no one to help him up. When Jesus speaks woe on something, he's saying this thing is destined to fail. <laughs> woe means it's not going to work. Woe means, well, it's only a matter of time before it falls into the pit. It will not prosper. It's, it's cursed. And we don't want to walk in a place where we have no possibility for bearing fruit. The Lord is saying, we need, to, we need to be partners. We need to team up. And the thing the Lord really ministered to me about was Spider-Man's from the Marvel Universe. Superman's from the DC Universe. I hope I'm talking to some comic book people here. I'm kind of in the comic book, so this was cool. They're from two totally different universes, but they came together for a common work. This is the heart of God. The Father and the Son share the same heart, but they have different expressions the Son and the Holy Spirit, they have the same heart, the same work, but they have different expressions. They augment one another. They supplement one another. They complement one another, right? They join together to make a fullness. Three in one. The Trinity is the fullness of God. One by itself is not the fullness of God. And so are we made in his image into the body of Christ where every joint supplies. How can the eye say to the hand, I have no need of you? These are the things God's working out of us. This is the season we're in. It says in verse 11, and if two lie down together, they will keep warm. How many of us are pretending that we're in a, a vibrant, abundant place, but we're alone? That means you're not in a vibrant, abundant place. Then it says, but how can one be warm alone? There's a comfort of the Holy Spirit that we do not experience when we're not walking together. The Spirit of God is trying to really encourage us to open up to other people. The scriptures uh, encourage us to come together. Verse 12, though one may be overpowered by another, two can withstand him. Listen, you can fight some battles by yourself, but it says here you can be overpowered. And it says in a threefold cord is not quickly broken. The Spirit of God wants to be right there at the center of your relationship. It's not just going to be you by yourself with another person. No, Holy Spirit moves when we come together. There's a strengthening. There's an anointing that exudes when we come together in the Spirit. So two coming together, right? The Bible says where two or three are gathered in my name, I am in the midst of them. Amen, somebody. So when we come together, the Bible says, if you agree touching anything, you will have what you ask for. There is, a, there is an anointing, there is a power that only comes forth when we come together in the spirit that God is calling you to. Who is your prayer partner? Who is it that you pray with when you need to get a breakthrough? Amen, somebody. Superman and Spider-Man together were unstoppable. But when Spider-Man, wearing his mask, tried to pretend that he could do what Superman was doing, he is vulnerable. Listen, vulnerability is not negative. This is what we need to grow up out of. We're supposed to be vulnerable. Why? Because that's who you are. The Bible says that, that God pities us because he knows that we are dust. We are all made from dirt. God has redeemed us. He's redeemed us. We are in his inheritance, but we're not inherited alone. We're inherited into a family. God created family. God created a cohabitation. We're to camp around the presence together. We are to express the glory of God in families. Oh, God. We are to express the family of God in friendship. Jonathan and David, there was an anointing. There is an anointing. Joab, 
Abner and, and Saul and David, these two, each of them had a, a right hand that made them better, that made them victorious where they would not have been victorious alone. Oh, somebody needs to hear the spirit of God. God is desiring that you link up with a friend in faith. Find one, find one and watch the spirit move. Help is on the way and help is closer than you think. There's someone coming to mind right now. Who is it God's putting in your spirit? This is your prayer partner. This is a person you don't have to pray with them every day. Maybe you do need to pray once a week. Maybe you do need to make it informal and say, listen, I just want you to know, I might call you every once in a while. There's some things I know I need to press through together with you in prayer. Hey, I might have some unspoken needs I'm not ready to talk about. You can be vulnerable, as vulnerable as you want to be. You don't have to lay it all out. The point is you need somebody. The scriptures are telling us that two are better than one. What does that mean? That my natural state of thinking is going to be, I need to, I need to fight this thing alone. Glory to God. My natural default position is, oh, I'm, I have faith. I can do it alone. But that's, that's exactly what the enemy wants you to do. He wants to, what does the Bible uh, call him? It, he calls him a, a wolf. He's a wolf. What do wolves do? What do, what do uh, hunters do? They try to isolate their prey so that they can attack them. I'm going to go to the scripture real quick and uh, read this verse. It says in Proverbs 18 and verse 1, listen to this. This is the Lord Jesus. Proverbs is the book of wisdom. A man who isolates himself seeks his own desire. He rages against all wise judgment. A man who isolates himself seeks his own desire. He rages against all wise judgment, meaning perhaps my problem is when I'm being isolated is I don't want to hear the truth. <laughs> perhaps when I'm wearing my mask is because I like pretending. I, I want to be seen as better than I am. I want to be in control. And God is saying this is not healthy. So uh, I'm going to leave it there. The spirit of God is going to have me pray with you right now. Uh, we're going to we're going to have our hearts and souls open to wisdom and delight in the wisdom of God. Amen. Father, uh, we bless you for the anointing that is on the word of God that says two are better than one. Because they have a good reward for their labor. God, we pray that we receive every reward that is connected to our friendships. I pray that we receive every reward that's connected to our joining together. I pray that we receive humility, God, in a, in a new way today. There are some of us who are fighting battles and challenges. The Lord is revealing this to me. You're fighting something. And the only way God's going to bless you and break through out of it is if you tell somebody else and begin to pray. Or at least get wise counsel. There's some things that you can't hide them because the enemy wants it to stay in the dark. You don't want to wait until you fall. If it can be avoided, Spider-Man in this dream fell and it was evident to Superman that Spider-Man needed help. But is it possible God sometimes just wants us to take the mask off before we even get into trouble? That's the word of the Lord for somebody. Take the mask off. Share with a trusted friend what you're going through. God has an anointing on this word for you today and he's going to bless you. You're going to find a reward in your labor together. Amen. Father, we bless you for that reward. I pray that we will understand there's no reason why we should be alone. You say you put the solitary in families. May we seek those that you've put in our midst to pray. In the name of Jesus, I pray you give us courage to do this. God, I thank you for the battle lines that have been drawn. But I thank you also for those that you've asked to come and fight alongside us. Ooh, Oh, you're growing the body of Christ up into a mature, humble army. Ooh, glory to God. Who are the members of my battalion? I hear the Spirit of God asking you, who are the members of your battalion in the Spirit? Shame comes alive in darkness. Shame tries to, it's a spirit. It tries to keep you from advancing. The Bible says that before the people of Israel went to take down Jericho, they first went to Gilgal, which means shame, the rolling away, and they were circumcised. Before they could find the victory, they had to have their shame removed. Glory to God. 
They were walking in remembrance of those who had to die before they entered into the promised land. And there was a shame. Those, they should be here with us. They should be entering into the land with us, but they were freshly circumcised, meaning they were cut in a place of vulnerability so that the spirit of God would have full access to them, even in their unpresentable parts. And the spirit of God wants access to where you think no one belongs. And he's only going to come in when you show the humility that pushes past shame and invites another person in to help you fight and take down the walls of Jericho in your life. The walls of your heart need to come down. And what's going to help you do it is if you share it with a friend. Somebody's battling addiction. Somebody's battling strongholds. And they will come down when you begin to share. They will come down when you begin to open up. I pray that every person that hears this word, hears the Lord God, if he's talking to you about this, that you will tear down every wall of shame and open your mouth and proclaim what's going on in your life because the Bible says truth sets you free. You will know the truth and the truth will set you free. The truth is you need help. The truth is you're not, is you're not to be isolated. The truth is two are supposed to walk together. Glory to God. There is an anointing that flows when we dwell together in unity, there is a power released and God wants to release the power for you to gain the reward of every part of your inheritance through being vulnerable, walking in the light and being transparent. Who is your prayer partner? Who is the friend that's going to walk with you into the reward? Glory to God. The Bible says they both get a reward. So don't listen. Don't stand in the way of your friend getting their reward for being your friend. You don't want to stand in the way of them receiving a blessing from God for being a faithful friend. The Bible says faithful are the wounds of a friend, meaning when they tell you the truth that you don't want to hear, there is a blessing and they receive a blessing as well. Oh, God, this is the word of the Lord for you. God, I thank you for the courage. Oh, God, what did you say to Joshua? You said, do not turn to the left or to the right. He said, mm, be of a good courage. Let's go to that scripture, Lord. I pray this into the hearing of your people, God. Glory to the Lord. Glory to the Lord. Only be strong and of a good courage. Only be strong. I pray now in the name of Jesus that we will only be strong and of good courage and that we will take the land, that we will take our position together. In Jesus' name, we pray this, Lord. Thank you for being here with us. Thank you, Jesus, for being here with us. Thank you, Lord, that you have the power. God, we thank you. You, I feel it anointed. You have the power. Oh God, we just need to tap into the power of unity, the power of friendship, the power of truth the power of honesty, the power of confession. Oh, some people have been afraid to confess some things. The Bible says that you need to confess your faults one to another, that you will be healed. If God has put something on your heart to confess, let it go, let it out, share it so that you can receive your reward. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Don't just share it with Jesus. Share it with a friend here on the earth who you can touch. And get the reward. <laughs> Amen. And get the prayer for the breakthrough. Mm. Glory to God. You will receive your reward in Jesus' name. I thank you for being here and hanging out. Uh, word of the day. I hope I, I'm trusting God will have another one for you tomorrow. And uh, if you want to find out more about our ministry, go to faithfireworldwide.com. We are in the middle of a $50,000 fundraising campaign to uh, take us into the next chapter of our ministry, international ministry. I'm going to be in Lima, Peru in November. Uh, month after month after that, I'll be in different nations preaching uh, revivals and in crusades. And uh, we just need to make sure we get the plane tickets and the hotel uh, accommodations and the like. We're also doing community outreaches. We're going to be doing one at the end of October. Uh, and one of the areas here in Greensboro have been under duress and we, we're going to bring the gospel. We're going to bring healing, the anointing to pray, the anointing for worship. We're going to bring it. Uh, we're going to love people. But this all, all requires partners. We, we're not doing this alone. We're not doing this in isolation. All of it is supposed to be done with the body of Christ involved. And so 
Uh, you can find out more about that on our website. You can also sign up for our newsletter on our website. Uh, you can sign up for our text alerts. You can do all of this also on our link tree, link tree slash faith fire, link tree slash faith fire. God bless you. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. May he lift his countenance upon you and give you peace. Until we see each other again, shalom to you. Love and blessings. Bye-bye.